Hello and welcome to Rule of 3's video review for Tales of Zillia, a JRPG from Namco for the PlayStation 3. I'm Roy Manning and with me today, like usual, are Sinister Dreamer. How are you doing today? Doing well and yourself? Doing great and impressions. How are you doing, buddy? Doing alright. Awesome. Alright, so Tales of Zillia is, I believe, like the 13th or 14th game in the Tales series, so since it's a long series, uh, history for each person. So me personally, I've played played pretty much every single one. Um, my favorites are Tales of the Abyss, Tales of Symphonia, and Tales of Destiny. Those are my personal favorites. Um, so yeah, uh, Sinister. I, I really haven't played any, any of them. I've played a little bit of Vesperia and I've watched my wife play Abyss and most of Vesperia and then played Zillia for a little bit. And impression? This is my very first Tales game ever, uh -huh. of all time. Uh, I am curious though, I've, I've been, I was, I was told that it's Exilia, does it matter? Uh, I don't know how it's pronounced, I, I say Exilia, but it might yeah. be Exilia, I don't know. Whatever, okay, go on. It's a weird name. Anyway, uh, so the story of this one follows two characters that you can choose from at the beginning, uh, Jude and Mia, or Mila. Um, each one's, each one's story is basically the same, but you do get a little bit more um, details in certain areas, depending on which character you chose at the beginning. Anyway, uh, it's their stories, and basically spirits and humans live in a shared world where spirits lend their powers to humans so they can do what are called spirits arts, which allow them to do cool things. Uh, however, Mila discovers a super destructive weapon in a laboratory and is basically trying to destroy it, and then things go horribly right, and then, you know, they set off on their journey to find a way to destroy it. On the whole, I really enjoy the story of this one. I think it's really good. Um, having the dual characters is kind of neat. Um, my wife's playing Mila as her main character. I'm playing G, so I get to see kind of the differences on each one while we're playing. And overall, like, I haven't gotten to the... Tales is also known for Super Twist. I haven't quite got to that point. I'm kind of excited to see what that is, because right now everything's really good story-wise. Sinister. Um, yeah, because uh, like for me, my wife's playing June... I'm playing Melia. Melia. Um, Sword Lines, it seems more or less Jude's the main story plot, and Melia's just kind of there. If you play her, it's just a lot of, like, okay, couple added uh, cutscenes, and that's about it. Um, otherwise, for story wise, it's not bad. Um, <laughs> for being the tales with story twists, as far as I know, there's like so many that my brain is backwards with how things are going. Right. Impressions? Before I comment, I, I, I am curious, is it typical for a Tales game to have, like, two campaigns or multiple protagonists? No. Which, oh, so this is a, a this first? This is the first. Because yeah, I, I know, from what I hear, Tales are obviously really long games, and I just want, I was just surprised that it would give you two campaigns. So, yeah, for completion, just to have to play the game twice. Yeah, if you want to know every little need. To, like, <laughs> like uh, Sinister said, Jude is really the main campaign. It, it gives you the most story bits, with Mila just kind of fills in some of the gaps that you get. And it's more of the details. Yeah, I figured as much. I mean, I, I obviously played as, I, I play as Mila, but I can tell that it leaves out gaps in Jude's story that you would get if you were playing it from his perspective. But I am really intrigued by the story. It, it's, I like the world that it's set in. I like the idea of humans and spirits coexisting. And I mean, I know it's different with each Tales game, but if each one has a story as rich and the background as you know well developed as this, I mean, it's obviously a pretty good franchise. I mean, is it comparable to like Final Fantasy and whatnot? Uh, yeah, pretty much. What's, is it just like a different company and this is their yeah. own little, you know, like Halo versus Call of Duty and Battlefield and all that? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Tales is exactly the same as Final Fantasy, except Final Fantasy is Square, Tales is Namco. And RPGs get these two? Yeah, okay. they're all different. They're all different depending on the game. The difference is Final Fantasy gets a number at the end, Tales gets a different world or whatever at the end. Yeah. Alright, so anyway, uh, the gameplay is done in real time in a 3D environment and you basically, uh, attack people with uh, 
normal attacks and what are called spirit arts. Spirit arts come in, uh, each character has a, their own list that you can use and unlock that do different abilities. Um, I'm just going to do all of the combat and we'll just kind of do a giant one because there's a lot to do with combat. So in combat, other than arts, uh, you can also do what's called linking. You can link to another character that gives uh, your character kind of a special ability of some sort. And then as well, you can do what are called linked arts, which every so often, there's a bar at the side that when it starts to glow every so often, you can do what's called a linked art, which is use one of your character's arts, arts and then the other character would do one of theirs, and then you can do like a super art which is uh, really cool. And then once you do that so many times, you'll go into kind of like this over limit mode that allows you to just kind of spam everything as fast as possible and build up your combos. I think like Musou from Dynasty Warriors. Yeah, pretty much. If you watch that one, it kind of works the same way. And you can switch uh, which character Link by with just by touching the D-pad. It's really simple. Um, and it's really cool. And I really enjoy the combat of this one. I think it's really refined over what it has come in previous tales. I thought it was, worked really well. I thought the linking system was genius. Um, oh, I forgot to mention, you can also switch out characters uh, in battle as well on the fly, which also helps for, like, if you need someone's ability to link up with them or you want somebody else on the field really quick uh, to switch out. And like I said, everything I just thought flowed real smooth. I love, like I said, I love the link arts. I thought that was a great addition as well as... Um, just being able to link to get those small special abilities like to uh, guard break instantly or steal items and stuff. I thought everything about the combat worked really well in this one. Sinister. Yeah, the combat system in this game actually really worked really well. Especially with the link linking and the link arts. Linking was just great because of the fact that it gave you a constant uh, flanking bonus. Basically, it's like, okay... Guy, your link partner gets behind the the enemy and just start uh, starts hitting them from behind to break their guard, and then you just wail on the guy. Um, the link arts, it's it's really cool when you you know get up to the big combo and they just you know start hitting them with the bit the big hits, and then just the one final like big art uh, f uh, hit and everything just like random starts dying. Um, and then uh, the nice thing that really came out of this was the uh, switching of party members in and out of combat. That was really ni a nice addition where you can just, okay, well, I want to take, you know, this character out and get Mila in, or just take Mila out and get another character in. I have to say, they actually really did well on the combat in the system. Impressions? Yeah, like I said, I have no experience with Tails, but... I mean, for what it was, I thought it worked very well. I, I, I appreciate the dynamic combat as opposed to turn-based, especially when it comes to RPGs. I feel like I'm actually, you know, involved rather than just kind of budgeting my attack and defense. Uh, I like that I could actually, I like the, you know, the option to dodge. I mean, and then the trading, you know, I would have, that's something I would have expected. I didn't realize it was particularly revolutionary for Tails games. And... Uh, the art story, you know, more stylish and flashy. I like it. It was fun. Alright. So, with this being an RPG, you know, you do level up as you fight monsters and all that good stuff. Uh, when you level up, you get what's called uh, growth points, or GP. You spend these GP on what's called the Lilium Orb, which basically has uh, the primary stats, and you pick which ones you want, and it'll level up that stat. If you surround, uh, there's little orbs in between the little lines, because it's, like it's kind of like a sphere grid. I'll just say that right now. It reminds me a lot of the sphere grid. But in between each one of those is like a little skill or something that when it's surrounded, oh, it'll unlock that skill or art or whatever is in between. And I, I really like the little morb and the GP system in this. I thought, once again, I thought it worked really well. Uh, it was allowed me to kind of customize my character depending on if I wanted them to be more uh, just normal attack combo heavy or a little bit more art heavy do more damage that way and I, I really allowed me to customize a little bit and like I said it works very much like the sphere grid to some extent in uh, Final Fantasy X if you've played that one and I like that one too so I like the uh, level up system in this one. Sinister. Yeah the the, the Lilith uh, grid it, it, was, it was really interesting to play around with because it was like okay so I can you know pick the specialization 
points that I need to for the character and then just start expanding from there with the rest of them to unlock more. And then we go from there with, you know, the next tier. It just keeps growing and growing and from there. And it, it's really interesting. Kind of actually cool <laughs> for someone that hasn't played Final Fantasy games or really Tales game. It was a really nice uh, growth system. Impressions? Yeah, it it's differentiates itself, itself from the typical, you know, the, the typical tier system where, you know, like you have three paths you have to follow, except the fact that it's... I feel like you have more control, like you guys said. Honestly, I didn't get to experiment much with it, but I can see how it would progress. Like, I can kind of infer where, what direction it, you would be able to take it in if you play a certain way. But, you know, I, don't, I, I honestly... I, I would have to play more before I really can comment on that. Yeah. Okay, uh, there's also, like I said, as you do that, you also unlock skills, which you can equip to each character. Uh, these skills are there's basically just passive abilities, and some of them can, if, if you're linked to someone, you share certain abilities if they have those ones equipped, so you can kind of uh, min-max a little bit on how many skills, because you can't equip all of them, you do get a certain amount. Uh, I do like the skill system, like, I, I, I don't want to talk about it too much. But, you know, it, it, it works. It's a nice little, you know, way to give your character small boosts and stuff. Sinister? Yeah, skills are kind of nice. It's just, you know, bounce between what skills you want to use and what skills you want to primarily use. And then, you know, what skills your allies have that you can share in common. Yeah. All in all, it's a good system. Impressions? Yeah, same as uh, what I said with the leveling. I mean... I'm, I'm sure it'll get better the further I get into the game, but right now, you know, it's, st it's still all very introductory still to me, so. Okay, and the last thing I want to go over is shops. So, and unlike most RPGs, you go to shops to buy equipment and items. Unlike most games, instead of it being based on what town you're in, it is completely based on the shop's level. You level up a shop by giving them items you get from monsters, and then it levels those shops up, and then they get new inventory, and then get new discounts. Uh, I think it is probably one of the greatest systems I've ever seen for a, a shop uh, system like this. Because I'm used to RPGs, you know, you go to a town that has a new equipment. This one, uh, as long as you grind out items, you can potentially get like ridiculously high level weapons early game. Except it costs an uh, arm and a leg uh, to do that because everything is expensive. Yeah, which you just have to grind everything out. <laughs> yeah, which just means more grinding, but I love the shop system. I thought it was a really neat idea to do that yeah the shop system was actually kind of interesting when my wife uh, started playing and i was watching and it's like huh level up system that's kind of cool you go out find your items on the ground in chests kill monsters you get their items off of them and then you just specifically you know go to shops that have a certain bonus and you give them that item and you get a bonus to those points to help level that system up faster which was kind of nice but all in all, it was really functionally very well done for the shop system. So it wasn't, you didn't have to go, oh, well, what town was it that I wanted a certain weapon for? It was just, okay, level it up, and there you go. <laughs> Impressions? Yeah, I agree. It is a very different take on the leveling system. I mean, to me, grinding and, you know, the level grinding is always going to be a chore. If I ever, Even if it is a game that I managed to actually... You know that I actually want to commit that kind of time to, but at least with this one, especially when you're trying to avoid dying and trying to avoid, you know, getting overwhelmed when you have missions complete, you can go to the shops wherever they are and get whatever you need there as long as you've leveled up the shop. Yep. I'm uh, assuming, okay. right? That's is that, is that correct? Right. Yeah. yeah okay. So uh, yeah, it's a good, nice little twist. Okay, uh, and that's really it. I mean, there is also side missions and other things, but I'm not going to go into those because it's just basic RPG stuff that's also in there. The side quests are back in this one a yeah. more than they were in some of the other ones. Uh, so that's it for this review. Um, now we're going to our rating. So here early through, we do not use a point system because I don't like dealing with having to do numbers. It's hurts my brain sometimes. Instead, we use a buy rent pass system. The buy means we think the game is worth the full price of admission to get the game on release, uh, whether it's 60, 50, 40, whatever the developer wants on whatever the day of the release, that's what they deserve. 
Uh, it's just that much fun and enjoyable, and they did a really, you know, developers did a good job. They deserve your money. Uh, rent is kind of twofold. It means, uh, obviously, if rent, you know, the game's okay. It's good. It's fun. It's not, you know, the best thing on the planet. You know, rent it from Gamefly or Redbox if you can to save some money or, you know, buy it half off at GameStop or used copy or something when it's on sale. Something along those lines, but, you know, it, it's fun. Uh, pass means it needs to be forgotten forever and never be played by anybody, really. Uh, so, uh, let's go with impressions. Why don't you start this one? No, not surprisingly. I pers Me, personally, I give the game a pass because I'm just not the biggest fan of RPGs. It is a good game, honestly. If you like, you know, if you appreciate the, the story, it, which is really good, and the RPG playing style, definitely, definitely buy the game. It's very well done. Um, from maybe, you know, a from a slightly player. biased standpoint, I can even, I can admit that much. But... If you, if you know, like me, you, you don't care for RPGs, obviously you don't get it. It'll be a huge waste of your time. Right, and money. So, yeah. yep. uh, I give I give the game a, a buy. Even though I'm not much of a JRPG fan, i actually still very interested in the game and I actually want to pick it up and play it again when I get time from off work. The JRPG versus RPG? So, are you, are you a fan of either differently or what? Not really, I'm just, for RP RPG, JRPGs, it's like, I don't find time to play, and I'm like, eh, this one actually has caught my interest in it. Alright, and I uh, also give it a buy. Uh, I think this is one of the best Tales games so far. Uh, I'm wanting to finish it so I can see where it ranks above, uh, see if it can finally knock down Tales of the Abyss as my favorite story one. Uh, if it does that, I'll be very impressed, but so far it looks like it may do that. But I think this is, like I said, I think this is one of the best Tales games to come out. It's very refined, and everything works very, very well. So there you have it. You have two buys and a pass. Uh, thanks, guys, for uh, coming. Make sure to subscribe to our channel up top. Uh, leave some comments below for send some entries into our Grand Theft Auto 5 giveaway we're doing this month. Uh, next week, I believe, um, it's an empty week. Although, I have a feeling Pikmin 3 may end up filling that gap, since we didn't do anything last week. Uh, that's what may be happening. So, yeah, that should be interesting. Uh, make sure to like us on Facebook, Twitter, uh, check out ruler3.com for, uh, some more information and, uh, written reviews when they're up. And that's it for this one, so, uh, thanks for listening, and always remember to trust in the rule of three.